Hi guys, welcome back to Cupcakes and Protein Shakes. I'm your host, Savannah. We're doing another episode of Bikini Girl Chit Chat where we sit down with another bikini girl. So this is a, one of my friends and you're, you're local to me too, which is cool because there's not yeah. a lot of like local athletes near me. So welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. We are planning to get into a lot of fun topics today, specifically mental health, which I know is a hot topic for competing. So welcome to the show, introduce yourself and what are you doing? Are you prep off season? Let's figure out where you're at right now. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm like thrilled to be here. So my name is Erica Magsum. I am an amateur bikini person here over in Kansas. Um, and that's actually how Sav and I met. How we met was here with angels and learning all things bikini. So I am currently in like an extended off season. Um, so I did my first competition season in fall of 22. And had a great experience as a first time athlete. I learned a lot and I learned that I was a petite little bikini athlete that just needed some glutes. (laughs) And as a natural athlete, I was like, okay, so like, we're going to be off for a while. And so I am in my off season Um, we did kind of the big bulk and then we brought it back down and we maintained for a while and I'm still bringing it back down a little bit, which um, I know I've listened to a couple of your podcast episodes before. A lot of people talk about like after you do those first couple of big bulks and I'm a natural athlete. So um, once you do those, it's sometimes kind of hard to get the mental piece around like, wow, my, my body is changing. This isn't what I'm used to. Some other people around me, like, don't look like me. This is really hard. And so, yeah, I'm just kind of loving the journey for my body right now and working with someone who can understand, like, how I work. Not necessarily, this is a standard bikini protocol and we're just going to stick to this. So, yeah, I think that's a great, hold on, like, little nugget of, you said, standard bikini protocol. protocol. They're truly is it there is Is not like a standard bikini protocol so if you're listening to this episode and you're like well my coach doesn't do it that way or i'm like trying to figure out what it should be it's whatever like works best for you there isn't a standard everyone gets this stage in a different way there's like 500,000 ways to lose body fat and to gain muscle and different coaches have different beliefs and different athletes have different lifestyles and steps and habits and food access and their favorite foods and all of that kind of stuff. So for you, um, I really do think that's a big topic because it's something like we came together, we ended up doing like a little heart to heart session with, it was an <laughs> off season workout and <laughs> yeah, we're in the depths of it. And we're just like, man, it's just so hard to, mm-hmm. you know, see yourself get lean and be in this best crazy conditioning and you know you're posting it online or your family know like and you just know how you feel you're the person that's in that body and then suddenly you're excited and it's the scale goes down 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 all that hard work you see it going down 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 then we go into the off season for the first time and that's a whole new journey So like, how have you, like, what was your mindset like? Like, what did you think? Like, what were some habits that you, that helped you or like, what has helped you with that journey? Yeah. I think what kind of helped me with it to begin with is that I didn't start lifting to be a bikini athlete. I started lifting because I was in the pandemic finishing a PhD and my major coping skill was, oh, at home workouts because gyms were closed and I had to move somewhere for an internship where I was by myself. I had no sport system. I had a roommate that had their own things going on. And so what I did was I worked out to cope and Beachbody appreciate that membership (laughs) that you offer for free in the pandemic. I was doing hit workouts every morning Sometimes I did it again at night and I realized, I was like, oh, I love having fitness in my life as a coping skill, but I didn't know how to feed myself appropriately. And I had this like body image, like ideal, this like body goal, body goal in air quotes, right? 
that I wanted to work toward and I was working so hard and I just got really tiny. Like I got really tiny and I was still like, huh, I'm putting in a lot of effort to get to this, like this body pic, like this body that I have in my mind. And then I get there and I'm like, not only am I not loving this, but also I feel terrible. Like I just don't feel good at all. So I ended up moving back to Kansas after I accepted a psychology fellowship and in my kind of mental health mind, I was like, okay, I got COVID. I lost more weight. I got really tiny. And I was like, I need help. Like I need somebody that knows what they're doing. So I asked around, I asked for some recommendations and my friend had recommended a local team to me just to start learning how to get into fitness and how to feed myself. And they asked me what, like, what my goals were there. I didn't know anything about competing. I didn't know anything about anything. I was like, I just want to like put on size and be really healthy and make, make fitness an active part of my lifestyle that brings me up rather than being something that I utilize as a tool um, to like, not just physically, but also kind of like mentally, it was bringing me down a little bit. So I entered into bodybuilding in that way, seriously worked with a trainer three times a week, had my nutrition coach checked in once a week. And I saw not only my body like filling out and responding really well, but prior to that, I had had intense GI issues for years. I saw a bunch of specialists, could not have whey protein, figured that out, couldn't have fish, figured that out. Um, but I was in pain all the time. Like my stomach would get upset and I couldn't eat for anything. And funny enough, when I worked with this coach, the transition to like the food, it took a while for my stomach to adjust. And then probably about four to six months in, I noticed, oh my gosh, I'm no longer having pain. I'm no longer having GI pain. And I was like, I can live a life without this pain. What is helping me do that? And then I realized when I went back to like having processed foods or things like that for an extended period of time, that's where I had a lot of pain. So I just started living the lifestyle of like, okay, when I eat these like whole foods, I have a better life. I don't have to say no to my friends or family for social events because I have pain and all this stuff. So the beginning of just lifting in general was me learning my body, learning food, learning things that I had no idea before. Um, and then I saw the muscle gain. Like I saw my body shift and I started seeing things that I was trying to do before, but had no idea to get there. And then, um, the team that I was on, there was a lot of competitors there. And I saw them, I saw them light up in the gym. I saw them like truly loving how competing like added to their life. And I was like, maybe like, maybe I could do that. And then I just pushed it off for a while. Like, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. That's not for me. Like I'm this like four eleven little thing. Like what, why would this be something that I could do? And then I kept going. And then probably three months later, everybody's like talking about getting ready for a prep for a show. I'm like, mm, maybe I could try. And then I started and I like caught the bug and I loved it. And I fully dived in. I followed all the bikini pros. I tried to get all of the information I could. We came into my first show, whirlwind experience, came with a lot of competitors at one show, learned some things that I love about it and then learn some things where I was like mm, I would I would love to do this a little bit differently so I went into my first show saw a lot of amazing girls a lot of amazing athletes that had been doing it obviously for for longer than I did and there was a girl um she ended up winning uh, my category and I just remember looking at her I'm like wow that is amazing like your body is literally art and I couldn't even imagine like what her journey was like and the best part about the show the like stage time and like doing all that stuff getting the glitz and the glam and the bikinis like all that is fun the best part was meeting the athletes like meeting people like you where I was like oh my gosh I want to know your story like how do you live in this world um just to kind of figure out like how can I do this too so I did my first show um the judging and the placing was a little all over the place for for my um my little group and I tried to get a lot of feedback and everybody's feedback was like, this was a great first show. You need more size. I'm like, okay, great. 
So a couple weeks later, I went to second show and then I did novice and open. It was so funny when we checked in. Um, they kept trying to remeasure my height because they couldn't get it right. And I'm I'm four eleven, and I just laughed because like it, I was taking up a lot of time. And I just laughed. I'm like I'm in the shortest category. Like like just let's, double A, let's make just, me my own. Like it's gonna be yeah. the a. Like like I'm under five two. Let's just call it four eleven and a half and move on. So I was like really embarrassed. So I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to take up people's space. I don't want to take up space. I don't want to take up time. Um, and then in, uh, I took first in novice and open and I was super shocked because I went into the season, um, kind of different than some of the athletes that I had been surrounded by is some of them were like, Oh, we're going to win. And like, some of them are like male, like big male bodybuilders that are like, gotta take their heads off. And I was like, that doesn't relate to me. Like, I don't want my, my version of success to be defined as winning because my version of winning was not having pain. My version of winning was being able to look at my body and the journey that it had been on and just be proud. So I was like, I don't give a shit how I place here. Sorry. I don't know if I can say no, that. Um, okay. I was like, I don't really care how I place. I'm just so dang proud of myself. And so, um, we did the, we did the whole thing. I didn't really know much about like what a prep was going to look like before. I just kind of experienced it as I went. And then I had been hearing chitter chatter about like, when you come off prep post show, how important it was to be really mindful, reintroducing your body to things that it hasn't had for a really long time. And I have a thyroid condition. So like prep was kind of hard for me because my body just did not want to listen. It didn't want to respond. And um, there probably was a little bit more, like I could have picked a different show and pulled a little bit more. Um, but I am still so very happy and very proud of what I did in my very first season. And then we did um, kind of that, that next little bit. We finished the show. We start introducing things back. And I was so incredibly thankful my coach listened to me. And I said, I'm I'm really scared about like coming off of this show and figuring out like what this reverse is gonna look like because I don't know. I think that was the thing that I I continually said is like I hired like this coach because not only was he an expert, but he was somebody that I could be vulnerable with and that I could trust. And like for brand new athletes now that I've been in the sport and around the sport for a little bit, um, I have a lot of young athletes come up to me at the gym and they'll mistake me as a coach. And I was like, that's really cute. I'm not a coach. Um, but they'll ask like, where do I start? What do I do? And my recommendation is always, are you following a meal plan or are you following a consistent workout schedule? If you're not, okay, it's okay that you don't know how to do that or you haven't done it before start interviewing coaches, three to five people. And I give them a couple of questions to ask, like, what is your coaching style? Um, what is your accessibility? Like, am I going to be checking in with you once a week? And that's the access that I have to you, which is really great for a lot of athletes. Or are you someone that knows like, oh, when I do something new, I need a little bit more handholding. I need you to be a little more available. Um, and I just give them this like little bundle of questions. But the baseline is check the vibe. Do you feel like this is somebody that you can be honest and transparent with somebody that you feel like you could trust? And so we did our reverse. I loved my reverse. I think I did such a great job because one thing for me as an athlete, I know, like, if you tell me what to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to train the way that you want me to train. I might have to ask you some questions of like, this is on my plan. What is this? I, what does this mean? I like, I like, don't know how to do that. Um, or I don't know what like RPE at eight, like, I was like, I don't know what this means. Can you help me? Um, but I'll ask the questions, but I will follow the plan. I will eat the things that you want me to eat. And so we did the reverse, loved the reverse. And then it was time to put on size. And I think for me, that first bulk post show, because when I was, 
putting on size initially, I wasn't thinking about being an athlete. I was just being a person. And I knew that to be healthy, I need more size. So post-show, it was such a different mindset. And I like started doing it. I recognized, okay, in order to gain muscle that I want, I know that like the size is going to come. And when size comes, my body naturally holds in these places. And this is how I look. And so I'm like, trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. And then there was a point where I'm like, this is getting really mentally hard. Mm -hmm. Like, oof, I feel myself really wanting to reject what I'm seeing because we love the shreds, right? Like, it's like, oh my gosh, I've never seen my body look like this before. And then I got to the point in my bowl where I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never seen my body look like this before. And this is scary to me because what happens if I put it, if I put all of this on and I can't get it off, like, what do I do? And so I was like constantly communicating, like, here's how the food's going. Here's how the workouts are going. And here's how my mental health is. And I think that the thing that worked best for me, because I thought, oh my gosh, my coach is going to be so disappointed. If I tell him that like, I'm mentally having a hard time with this physical size and the shape that I have, which was beautiful. Like I go back and I look and I'm like, yes, like queen, look at the glutes. Like we love that. That's what we were asking for. Um, But it was just so hard because when we have those goggles, like we have goggles in prep, we also have those goggles in that like thickness of the off season. And I just, I tried to find anyone, anyone that posted about their off season, anyone that had some shapes that looked like me or somebody that held in their stomach instead of their glutes. Cause I'm like, wouldn't it be nice? Like my best friend, love her to death. Her off season is all in her booty. I'm like, that's so nice. I would love that. But that's just not me. That's not me. My my face got really round and I noticed it in my stomach first. And I scoured, I scoured Instagram to find anything. And I couldn't find it. I could not find it anywhere. I I looked and all of the athletes that I could find, they maybe were like going to nationals. So I'm like, okay, you've done, you've done this a couple of times. Like if you're going to nationals, You've been in the bulk a couple of times. And I really wanted a natural athlete because I'm like, that's what, that's what relates to me. And I just kept looking and I kept looking and I cried a lot because I'm like, oh, I feel so alone. Like, did I do something wrong? And then I started posting about it on my personal Instagram. Not a lot of engagement at first. And then I kept getting people come up to me, like, and even non-competitors, non-athletes thank you so much for posting this. Like, these are the things that nobody's posting, nobody's saying. And you and I actually had a conversation about that because like, I got to a space where I was like, I communicated to my coach. I'm like, okay, I need to be done. Like, this is my, this is my threshold. And he was like, okay and then he pushed just like a hair more and then the next week he brought it back down and I was like couldn't we have brought it down like when I told you (laughs) I was having a hard time but then he really listened and when I found myself like posting I was intentional about posting that like peak of my off season because I'm like yes I need other people even if it's one person I don't have a huge Instagram following. So I was like, even if it's one person that finds this helpful and finds this beneficial, it's worth it to me. And I got way more than one. I got lots of people coming up to me saying, thank you. Like I was looking for anyone, anyone that was willing to talk to me about this. Cause I see the shreds. I see the prep. I see all of those things, but like everybody disappears. Now at this point, it's been two years post-show, like it is 2024 now. And my career kind of took over a little bit. It needed a lot of time, but I also was like, I came down, I came down a little bit, not a lot, a little bit. And I stopped posting. And the other day I was like, oh, I should have kept posting. Like I should have kept doing this thing. So it's like, you're not just seeing when I was like the most uncomfortable, but you're also seeing like, all right, now that I've settled in, here's what it, here's what it is. And so I posted the other day 
I posted a, this is where I started like pandemic air cut, just a very petite little toothpick. <laughs> and this is where I am now. And huge response. And those yeah. people came back and they were like, thank you. Like, thank you for sharing this because like I, I grew up in the nineties and that that physique mentality is really really ingrained in millennials and people are like oh my gosh like you the number on the scale which I have constantly preached for a long time like I, I don't give a shit I don't care about the number on the scale I had to buy a scale when I got a coach because I didn't have one I had such a negative relationship with it and so I'm like I really don't care about that I care about how I feel about my body and when I look in the mirror like am I proud? And so it took me a long time to be proud of the fact that like my body now has curves that want to stay. And I'm like, but, but the abs, like that was really nice too. And so um, a lot of the things that I noticed on this like personal mental journey, I did a lot of work. I have my, my personal therapist that I've, I've talked to and we did a lot of work together. And then I noticed my teammates. I noticed them kind of going in preps without me. And I decided to not jump on stage every year because I knew that like in order to compete the way that I wanted to compete, I needed just more time. And then I felt left out. Like I felt left out, but I also noticed that there is a different way for me to engage in the sport in this season. And it was as the supporter. It was as the person that saw people just struggling with their mental health, feeling like they didn't have the person pouring into them during those really challenging times. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I'm really good at that. Like, I'm really good at the mental health side of things. And so that's where I started to spend my time. And I'm like, oh, I can, I can merge my career and my hobby. Like, mm -hmm. I can talk about mental health and in bodybuilding, because though I think there are people talking about it now, particularly more women, and I love hearing men, speak about it too but I'm seeing it more in female spaces I'm just like it's not enough like there's not enough and then you see these IFBB pros that are living their full lives as bikini athletes and I'm like I got an eight to five like I don't I don't know how you're you're doing this um and so it was just so interesting to me to be able to be like you know I may not be making the biggest impact like on a global stage like some of these beautiful athletes we're seeing at the olympia um and i think that they're doing a really good job of bringing mental health to the forefront as well like i could i could impact my people here i can talk about mental health in prep i can talk about mental health in off season and like the smallest things such as have you socialized today have you talked to anyone like I know, like, are you drinking your water? Like, are you moving your body in something that's not regimented to your protocol? Like, can you go outside? There's such interesting coping skills that we need in our everyday lives that in prep, it's just so tunnel vision of this is what I have to do. This is where I need to go. And people kind of get lost in that sometimes. And so I switched my, my little Instagram handle and started really kind of branding myself as this, like this fit doctor, like, let's talk about mental health. Let's talk about fitness and like, learn with me because I promise you I'm an uncoordinated queen. Like I have tried to be athletic my whole life and not for failure. Like I was a cheerleader in college and, and like, I really enjoyed that as a part of my life. And I do think the like pathway from athletics to bodybuilding as you probably have talked about with many athletes is very strong. Like we see like Amy Delgado, who was a competitive cheerleader. And then here we go. Like she's had a kid, you know, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, I just, I needed an outlet and I found it. And I realized that like I could pour into the sport, even if I'm not an IFBB pro. Mm -hmm. And even if that wasn't my end goal, because the other piece of that was like people kind of, gave me a little bit of grief about like not really caring about winning. Um, and I was like, they're like, well, that's why, that's why you compete. And I was like, wait a minute, I can go for me. Like I can do this all for myself. 
Yeah, that's really yes. impactful. Like, I'm glad that you're bringing that up because this podcast, it comes back to the fact that I kept listening to these pros at one of the very beginning of my journey and was like, this is so unrelatable to me. I was like, you're, you're perfect. You have everything paid for. Everything is, is sponsored for you. Like it just mm -hmm. seemed like it was such a dream to listen to them. But then I would hear of like, oh, you know, supplement companies. And I knew it wasn't always. So I would hear their journey of like from amateur to pro. And I really related to that grind, that climb. And I was an amateur at the time when the podcast started. I'm like, I just feel like there's just more people. There's so many amateurs out there that we will never turn pro. Okay. So we had a little technical difficulties, but we are back now. So we're going to go as long as we can. Um, but yeah, so like what I, we were kind of talking about before we jumped off was like the fact that like the podcast started when I just like realized there's thousands of amateurs that'll never be pro. And it's not necessarily that it's never that they don't want to, but some people just have, they are one and done or they just don't want to have a certain amount of muscle. They want to stay natural, but they want to compete or they want to do it as a bucket list, or it's simply a personal accomplishment, like winning in being a champion. This is something that I actually learned um, at one of the seminars I was doing by Tanji Johnson. She was talking about like if your definition of champion and what it means to like embody a champion doesn't necessarily always come with a trophy. And there's mm -hmm. so much impact that you can have just by stepping on stage and like your family is going to watch you go through this. Anyone that lives in your house, if you have kids, you're, you're a role model for your children. And we idolize the top athletes because their bodies are amazing and and yes, yeah. like it is a great goal. And if being pro is your goal, that is fantastic. But the right. impact, it's like, there, there's no point of having a trophy in my mind. If mm -hmm. when you get that trophy, there's no one to clap for you. There's no one who cares, right? Yeah. Like you, you should do this as a personal journey. And even if you're the only person to clap for yourself and you are really proud, that's all that it takes. If you are happy and proud at the end of the journey, wherever it is, like, whether it is on stage or off stage or involved in it, like it's not always about it. And that has been a hard transition for myself because I was yeah. on the opposite spectrum. When I started, I started and I just wanted to do one. I wanted to have a personal challenge. Then I was hooked. Then it was game mode. I understand how this works. I want to go to nationals and win the first it is in the overalls. And I want to get the pro and the Olympian and then this and then that. And I want to go and I want to go straight to the top and I'm not going to yeah. be until I get to the top. And if anything is less than first, if you're first, you're last, so like blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. then I started realizing like when I would lose shows, like I had so much support, like it, it didn't matter. It did not matter. Like no one knew the placing, like people that don't really follow the sport, they don't get it. They just see, mm -hmm. holy shit, you're in shape. Wow. How did mm -hmm. you get there? People go up to you in the gym and just grab your shoulders. Like, how did you get those? Yeah. They'll look at your yeah. butt like, I really like your butt or like your legs or your hamstrings. Like my wife really yeah. wants to know, like, how did you like, because again, when you first yeah. start, you don't know how to feed yourself, how to train, how to do all this mm -hmm. stuff. And you learn and like the impact that you can have, like you're, you're like, you're starting to get a, a small taste of it because it was something that you were already passionate about and it spread and being vulnerable to people and like, talking about mm -hmm. not just the wins, not just the highlights, not just completely filtered out perfection, chiseled abs of look at me, I'm winning, I'm happy, I'm always happy, prep is a breeze, mm -hmm. it's easy, easy breezy, beautiful prep. And I remember I started the same way and was like having a hard time. And I would yeah. look and I was like, no one is talking about the struggles of prep. I was like, I'm like really having a hard time, and especially in the off season. I just saw the pros would yeah. maintain their stage weights and they would not yes. lift more than five to 10 pounds. So they still look better than I did, even at the, even when I was lean. So I was just yeah. curious because yeah. I, you know, I was going, I'm a five, seven. It's not a lot, I, you know, it's not a little amount of weight, 20, 25 pounds was like, yep. it would just put on really quickly. I, yeah. I had two shows within two weeks. I was. 10, 15 pounds heavier in less than two weeks. And it took me three, four months to get it off. And that was so hard. It was so hard of, I'm still doing the work. I'm still dieting. I'm still 
struggling and I'm heavier now. It just, I made all these sacrifices and I just yeah. kind of didn't want to accept it. Cause you do, you do think that when you get in shape, you're going to be able to keep it kind of forever. And so the opposite happens. Like we go into the reverse and the scale is going the opposite direction. And I really liked the point that you're talking about of prep goggles. Cause I never thought of prep goggles in the off season. I've never, I've never compared that analogy. Mm -hmm. It is amazing because you get yeah. excited for your first prep. Like I can't wait until I have abs. I can't wait until do my first show. You Thank should try to flip the switch and just think, I can't wait till I'm deepest of my bulk and I have the curves and I can't wait until I uh -huh. have the energy and my lifts are strong. I can't wait until I just yeah. feel healthy and I have a social life and I can go out to eat and I don't stress about food and I don't have to be in the gym six, seven, eight hours. Like it's crazy. So mm -hmm. we all we are focusing is on this little scale or, you know, abs, like how we, how we physically look, but it's so different. Like I feel terrible when I'm lean. I feel amazing when I am off season, yeah. but how my mental health is it's flipped. It's like, when you have abs, you would think that you would feel confident. You would think that no, because mm -hmm. it's a spectrum. And like, if you can find right after you settle in, my favorite part is like, after your yep. prep's done, you did the diet, you kind of settle mm -hmm. in eight, 10, 12 weeks, few months go by and your body mm -hmm. just kind of stabilizes your mind gets used mm -hmm. to the idea of I've accepted how I look. I've accepted this new weight. Mm -hmm. Training is easier. These movements feel good. I'm now I'm starting to progress in weight. Yeah. I'm getting stronger. My food is going up. I'm starting to feel good. And that yeah. is the place where honestly, I was scared to prep this year because I felt so good in my off season. Cause that's when we, when we yeah. first started, I remember I was in the depths. I was like, I feel like shit. I'm missing out FOMO. Everyone's competing. Everyone's lean. I just feel like this thick sausage in my pants. Like I need a different wardrobe. This isn't fun. Literally, and it, you have to spend so much money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it was just kind of like, oh, I, I really, I had never had time off like this where I didn't have a show planned. And I just like let my body and mind like I had always been go, 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 go next, 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 next show, next show, next show. And I didn't ever care about how I was looking in an off season because I just, I'm like, I just need to get to the next day. I don't care about everyday life. I was like, just doing it for the stage, the stage, the stage, the stage. But now I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's back up a minute. You're on stage one day, uh, one yeah. day a year. For you're like less than five minutes for five minutes for like one what? picture that you're gonna post yep. like you're gonna post one. your one stage shot one picture maybe a little cute reel of you in your posing bikini uh -huh. and and you with your post show treat and that's it so 364 yeah. days of the year you have to be mm -hmm. in this not shredded body and yeah live with that and so it's good that we're bringing this up and I think it's it's great for me to hear this too. Just like everything is temporary. So if you're in the depth of prep or you're in the depth yes. of an off season, it's yes. temporary. It's like at the beginning of prep right now, it's where I'm at. And I feel like, oh, it's anxious. But once you settle in the prep, it gets easier. Same thing. Yes. Settle in your off season. It gets easier. You'll find that homeostasis, yes. but it's, it, it, you know, and the fact that um, I was talking about this yesterday with Kara about how you could be the same weight going down, losing weight into a prep and you could be the same exact yep. weight, but you're on the opposite of a prep. You're not dropping, you're in a reverse and you could feel completely different about yourself, mm -hmm. even though it's the same body, even though it's the same weight. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. crazy? Cause I've yep. been 145 pounds cutting yeah, and it knowing it's going to drop and I'm so excited yeah. and I'm like, <gasps> oh my gosh, I was 155 pounds. Now I'm 10 pounds down. I just love this weight. I've been on the opposite where I was stage lean at 130 whatevers. And then I'm, oh, I'm so fat. I'm 145 mm -hmm. now, blah, blah, blah. But it's the same weight. Mm -hmm. And we have to just get out of our heads of like the scale is a number. A number isn't a feeling. It's just a yeah. thing. And if you don't like it, you can make a change. Yeah. But if you really aren't doing the mental health side of things yeah. and like, figuring out like, cause your, your wins are yep. like, what is that going to get you? Like, 
what is it going to get you? Mm-hmm. It's not just a trophy. Yes. It's not, it's something, yeah. if it is for you, that's here. You have some issues going yeah. on, but like, what is it going to get yeah. you? Is it sponsorships? Is it fame? Is it the self ex- like I can feel complete or it's just a mm-hmm. goal that I want to accomplish, but it is that when there's something behind it that is driving you yeah. to the stage and you have to be okay. Like, can you still get that fulfillment out of competing mm-hmm. without the placing? Because it's subjective, you guys. It's yeah. a bikini, it's a bikini, yeah. but it's a pageant. Like we like this yep. girl today. The criteria is set, but it is yeah. not, a, it's not perfect. There is variance in preferences of body types and structures and conditionings. Mm-hmm. So her bikini, it's not about being lean. It's not about being the mm-hmm. biggest. It's not about mm-hmm. being the smallest. It's a, your a, propo- proportions. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're bringing this up. And I think this is going to end up like Fit Doc is going to blow up because it is needed. Yeah. There isn't a lot of mental health. It's always just yeah. like, the not the mental health side <laughs> it's not yeah it's- well and it's so interesting too because I found in the bodybuilding world because we're not talking about it um my mental health things were not performing as well as when I post my workouts or when I post my check-ins and then I was discouraged I'm like I literally spent my whole life getting PhD in counseling psychology and the things that I put out that I'm most passionate about the mental health side of the stuff, crickets, absolute crickets. And then when I post like my photo shoots or summer bikinis and check-ins and workouts, it's blowing up. I'm just like, dang, this feels really disheartening. So literally six days ago, I decided I'm going to put my, my mental health content. I'm going to put this in a place where I feel like people will intentionally go for that content and just see, like, let's just see. And what I found is in six days, it has doubled in response to people who really wanted to pour in there. And my fitness community went over there. They wanted that. And I realized, Oh, it's because I was showing the side that I wanted to show, like the fitness, the workouts, like, oh, my back's finally like growing. I'm showing that as the primary and mental health was secondary. So now that I've switched over and I'm like uncensored psychologist, I'm going to tell you exactly how it is. No bullshit. Let's go. People are responding to the authenticity. They're responding to the like, I'm allowed to talk about my mental health here. I'm allowed to be angry and sad and whatever emotional spectrum comes up and it's fine. And I realized comparison is the thief of joy. I was comparing the fact that my, like, I didn't look like other bikini girls. I looked, I remember being a young bikini athlete looking at Laura Lee and what she was able to eat. And I'm like, how that's uh, my goal my goal is to be able to post eat. videos like post show videos like she'd eat like a yes. feed and not gain like a pound and I would <laughs> I would be like well how come I gained 10 pounds I don't understand or I literally said my goal is to train long enough and hard enough that my maintenance could look like that yep. and that was like my little tunnel vision at that point And now I have kind of shifted and I realized like, I don't, I don't need to look like my best friend who is getting ready for nationals and had this teeny tiny waist and beautiful glutes in her off season. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Or like, I know when I'm on the stairs, my 20 minutes at a level seven, by the time I'm done, I'm just a drenched little rat. And I see like the cute little girly with a six pack strolling on the incline treadmill and am I, in my mind, I'm like, and this was like really judgmental of me. And I, I recognized it. I was like, I'm working harder with less results. Why? Why am I doing this? And I remember like, even recently I'm working with uh, Ryan Silva with Silva Strong right now. And I sent a check-in and I remember the whole morning, the whole day I was so upset because I'm like, my cardio is up my food is down, not like down low to an unreasonable maintenance spot, but like my food was lower and my weight went up 
and I'm like, I'm working so hard. Why? And about six hours later, I was like, oh, Erica, you've never taken creatine before. You've been on creatine for two weeks. What does creatine do to you? You hold water. That 1.2 pounds that ruined your entire day is what's helping you make the gains that you want. And I was freaking out because of the scale. I was fine until I looked at the scale and I said, oh my gosh, I'm four pounds away from that peak bulk weight that I was so miserable in. I was terrified in. And then I go look at my, I go look at my pictures now that I'm not in that deep emotional space. And that's like one of the big things that I would recognize for me, like to encourage new athletes. We don't make big decisions in deep emotions. When we feel deep emotions, don't push them away. Give yourself permission to feel what you're feeling. Understand a little bit about where it's coming from. Stay away from the anxiety thought spirals of like, well, I should have done this past behaviors, right? Or like, well, what if this happens? Thinking about the future. How can you stay present in this moment right now? Because just like you were describing, those are the moments where like you define your version of champion. And your version of champion may not be what 2021 Erica thought about before I started. I'm a completely different person at this point. Like I was shy and anxious and like scared and all of this stuff. And now I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to be outspoken and loud and let my thoughts be heard. And if you love it, come along a journey with me. And if you don't like it, that's also okay like unfollow, like yeah. unfollow. And it, I, it rem- reminds me of when I saw you after my first season, my first show, we were at a workout. It was like, I think with some of the angel team at chiefs fitness in, in Kansas city. And you were talking about, like, I think you were getting ready for nationals again. This was the nationals for your red suit. See, this yeah. is how, this is how I track it. Like, yeah. I know you were red. <laughs> um, and then it was shortly after that, you made your transition to WBFF. And I thought it was so amazing and beautiful because like, when I saw you, I was like, oh my gosh, this girl has got the path. Like she knows she wants to be in the NPC and she wants to do this stuff. And when I saw you and Hannah transition and Hannah was already a pro. Yeah. Right. And when I saw that transition, I was like, oh my gosh, light bulb, like go where you would best fit. Go try yeah. something new, try the experience. Cause I thought it was NPC or bust. Like this was the experience you're supposed to have. And like your mental health doesn't matter. If it sucks, just like fucking let it suck on the treadmill. And I and I'm like, whoa whoa, I saw one of my best friends get ready for nationals in Pittsburgh and completely crumble at one point. And I'm like, who's pouring into your mental health? No one. So every every week I went in, we posed together and my entire goal was, let me see your light shine again. Let me see you, not this honestly body of a person <laughs> that like doesn't even resemble you anymore. And so it was with that. And I have a a girlfriend getting ready for her first show right now. And she was like really struggling. And the thing that I could pour into was, let me help you understand the mental side of this sport and why it's coming up the way that it is. And what coping skills do we have? Like before you enter a prep, you need to have a good coping skills toolbox that's not food, that's not alcohol, and that doesn't rely on anyone else fully understanding your mental capacity because no one understands your body or your mind better than you. Yeah. So if like, oh, sorry, go ahead. It's so true to like, I think prep is, uh, because show day is such a high, it's such a extreme dopamine hit. People can just get addicted, myself included, where it's like you're, you become like a shell of a person in a prep where it's just, you're just thinking that you need to just keep going and going and going because you have that glimmer and you feel good on the show day. And then what's the point of just feeling good for one day when you have to deal with it, like the self doubt, there's so many competitors that you would think that have it all together 
that don't, you would think, oh my gosh, their body is crazy. Yeah. They won all these shows. They've done this and their mental health sucks. You would think that it would be yeah. the opposite, but it's not always the case. And so it's just really important like yeah. that you keep, like if you're entering this sport that you realize like some of these things are going to happen. Sometimes you're going to feel mm -hmm. the suck and the pain and the emotions, but you can't mm -hmm. use prep to suppress as like prep isn't a coping mechanism. You can't just yes. throw your problem yeah. into a prep, push them off for 18 weeks because you have a show, mm -hmm. keep your focus on else and then expect to have a great reverse. It's going to go horrible because everything mm -hmm. that you push away that you couldn't cope with during prep, it's going to come back in the off season. Flip. Right. it's just moving it along mm -hmm. so you have to still yeah. be able to live a life that you enjoy mm -hmm. and do prep and sometimes yeah that means sacrifices yeah. and everything but you have to like have that mental there and bodybuilding yeah. is a hard sport if you're mentally mm -hmm. not strong you're not going to be able to handle it long term i agree because you're getting on stage and nothing to get judged for a physical appearance and it's, mm -hmm. and it's easier to say, oh, whatever placing doesn't mean anything, but okay, after you've spent X amount of weeks and monies and you really put your heart into your body, tell me how you feel after. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you feel after when someone that you don't yeah. know, a random stranger judges you and says, eh, I don't like it. Yep. You have to be completely. Mm -hmm. cool and I and think okay. too. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I think too, like we give permission to spend money on bodybuilding. Like people do not talk to newbies about the expenses. And I mean, I know people try, but like you don't run into the educational sources until you're deep in the sport. Like I didn't find you until I had already like gotten to that point. And I think we are willing to spend money on sport. We are not willing to spend money on our mental health. And I'm like, boom, mind blown that I'm watching people going through these preps, that's mental health is really challenging. And like, I understand therapy is not always in everyone's budget. And in my mind, like, if you know that there's, there's a probability that or your toolbox isn't full, right? The probability that something could be really hard and really challenging, prioritize your toolbox first, because the stage will always be there. Yeah. And like you can go to therapy for six to eight weeks. Now, will you get everything that you need depending on your life? No, it's just like the prep protocol. Everybody's protocol is different and what works for them. But in six to eight weeks with a good therapist, now I have a whole tangent about like there's a lot of therapists that are unfortunate out there, just like there's a lot of coaches out there that maybe you don't have the background we'd like them to have, which is why vetting coaches is so incredibly important. And if you don't know what questions to ask, go find people that you trust that can help you build kind of those questions. Same thing with a therapist, like vet your therapist, take six to eight weeks and build your toolbox. Because not only will that help you in this sport, it will help you in your life. Mm -hmm. And your life is way more important than any tiara sword. I guess they don't do swords anymore, but like it, the placings don't matter if you're not enjoying your life. And that's where I've gotten to at this point is, do I really think that I'm going to spend forever in the sport of bodybuilding? Definitely not. Like I know that forever may not be the thing for me, but have I gone through this journey of an off season to get to the point where I'm so excited to go through the, the prep process again and to be on stage and to just be so incredibly proud of what I've worked for for two years. Yes, I'm so excited. And I know that this season is going to be so uplifting and fulfilling, not without its challenges, but it's going to be something that I can continue to pour into myself by instead of I'm drudging through the trenches and prep and I can't wait until it's over and I can get my life back. Like, I think the mindset going into it is just so incredibly important. Yeah, I agree. I love it. I feel like we've covered quite a bit. Um, yeah. Is there anything that we haven't talked about, like your personal journey or just anything that you wanted to make sure that we got a chance to talk about or just some final thoughts? 
Um, final thoughts. Uh, anyone that has settled or listened through me ramble, I appreciate it. And like, I want to be a vessel. I want to be a resource. So this is me giving permission for anyone that comes across this podcast. Like if you have questions, if you relate to anything that I'm saying, like send me a DM. Sav can give you my information and my contact because like the passion that I have for mental health will be something that I continue to pour into. And, and I would love to bring that into this sport in any way um, in a, a, a mezzo or macro level that I absolutely can. Um, and I guess my, my final thoughts is this is a journey for you and you get to have power and autonomy and choice in how you get to go through this journey. So make your support system, make your community, people that are going to be cheering for you when you're silent and people that are going to be cheering for you <laughs> when you're cheering too, because it truly is about the community. It's about the community and like, listen to your body. If you feel like there's a path, whether it's a, a coaching staff, it's a gym environment, whatever it may be. If you feel like something is off, it's because it is, and you're really smart and your body's listening to you. So don't push those things off because sometimes change is terrifying, but it could be absolutely the best thing for you. I would have been terrified to be over a certain amount of weight previous to 2021. And my life has never been better with my body in the way that it is now. And I, I do have finding a coach and learning and education and, and partially bodybuilding to thank for my health at this point. Um, because that tiny version of Erica that like maybe had really great abs and pictures, that was not a happy person at all. And like, I can say honestly and transparently now that I experienced so much joy and so much love because of what I fostered within my, my support system in my life and giving yourself permission to do that without having to just like sacrifice all the time. Mm -hmm. I like it. And if they want to follow you in your journey on this, after this episode, where can they follow you? Um, so if you want a little more of the personal things, this is where I'm throwing my dog and, and a little more workouts uh, at fit doc underscore Erica on Instagram. Most of my things are on Instagram. And if you're interested in the mental health perspective, um, specifically find me at the uncensored psychologist on Instagram as well. Um, it's got some fun stuff on there. It's, it's actually really cool. I'm enjoying having that space. So either both, I'd love to have you in any space. Amazing. Well, I appreciate your time for coming on the episode. It's always good just to bring me back to, because like going into, I'm, I'm what, two or three weeks into a prep and I was kind of mm -hmm. scared to prep because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to lose the fat that I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure if it was going to go, you know, it's going slower. And so our, our conversation has been nice for myself just to remember, like it is a phase you can do it mm -hmm. again and have yeah. that passion of like, it's not, you don't have to stress. What if I don't win? What if I don't win? What if I don't win? It's like, just what do you want to get out of this? And I've been, I think that's been hard for me to say, well, maybe I don't want to win and I just want to do it for me and that's okay. So it's good to bring that up and I'm excited to yeah. hopefully talk to you soon and see the rest of your journey yeah. unfold and your new social media account. Oh, I appreciate it. And we are all looking forward to seeing you on stage again. There's so much artistry in WBFF. And like, I literally would have never learned about that world had it yeah. not been for you and Hannah. So like, thanks girl. That's a lot of fun. Uh, thank you. All right. We'll talk to you later.